when Scrooge awoke, it was so dark that, upon looking out of bed, he could scarcely distinguish the transparent window from the opaque walls of his chamber, until suddenly the church clock tolled a deep, dull, hollow, melancholy one. Light flashed up in the room upon the instant, and the curtains of his bed were drawn aside by a strange figure, like a child, yet not so like a child as like an old man, viewed through some supernatural medium, which gave him the appearance of having receded from the view and being diminished to a child's proportions. Its hair, which hung about its neck and down its back, was white as if with age, and yet the face had not a wrinkle in it, and the tenderest bloom was on the skin. It held a branch of fresh green holly in its hand, and in singular contradiction of that wintry emblem, had its dress trimmed with summer flowers. But the strangest thing about it was that from the crown of its head there sprung a bright, clear jet of light by which all this was visible, and which was doubtless the occasion of its using in its duller moments a great extinguisher for a cap which it now held under its arm. Are you the spirit, sir? Whose coming was foretold to me? asked Scrooge. I am. Who and what are you? I am the ghost of Christmas past. Long past? inquired Scrooge. No, your past. The things that you will see with me are but shadows of the things that have been. They will have no consciousness of us. Scrooge then made bold to inquire what business brought him there. Your welfare, said the ghost. Scrooge expressed himself much obliged, but could not help thinking that a night of unbroken rest would have been a more conducive to that end. The spirit must have heard him thinking, for it said immediately, Your reclamation, then. Take heed. It put out its strong hand as it spoke and clasped him gently by the arm. Rise and walk with me. It would have been in vain for Scrooge to plead that the weather and the hour were not adapted to pedestrian purposes, that that bed was warm and the thermometer a long way below freezing, that he was clad but lightly in his slippers, dressing gown and nightcap, and that he <coughs> had a cold upon him at that time. The grasp, though gentle as a woman's hand, was not to be resisted. He rose, but finding that the spirit made towards the window, clasped its robe in supplication. <coughs> I am mortal, Scrooge remonstrated, and liable to fall. Bear but a touch of my hand there, said the spirit, laying it upon his heart, and you shall be upheld in more than this. As the words were spoken, they passed through the wall and stood upon an open country road with fields on either hand. The city had entirely vanished. Not a vestige of it was to be seen. The darkness and the mist had vanished with it, for it was a clear, cold winter day with snow upon the ground. <laughs> Good heaven, said Scrooge, clasping his hands together as he looked about him. I was bred in this place. I was a boy here. Your lip is trembling, said the ghost. And what is that upon your cheek? Scrooge muttered with an unusual catching in his voice that it was a pimple and begged the ghost to lead him where he would. You recollect the way? inquired the spirit. Remember it, cried Scrooge with fervor. I could walk it blindfolded. Strange to have forgotten it for so many years, observed the ghost. Let us go on. 
They walked along the road, Scrooge recognizing every gate and post and tree, until a little market town appeared in the distance with its bridge, its church, and winding river. Some shaggy ponies now were seen trotting towards them with boys upon their backs who called to other boys in country gigs and carts driven by farmers. All these boys were in great spirits and shouted to each other until the broad fields were so full of merry music that the crisp air laughed to hear it. These are but shadows of the things that have been, said the ghost. They have no consciousness of us.